हेलो एंड वेलकम टू माय चैनल मैजिक ऑफ मेडिसिन टुडे आई विल बी डिस्कसिंग एन इम्पॉर्टेंट टॉपिक इन वेमेन्स हेल्थ व्हिच इज रिटेन्ड प्रोडक्ट्स ऑफ कंसेप्शन नोन एज आर वी विल कवर व्हाट आर इज व्हाट आर इट्स कॉजेज सिम्टम्स डायग्नोसिस एंड द ट्रीटमेंट ऑप्शंस सो कमिंग टू वॉट इज आर As the name suggests, the retained products of conception. It is persistent trophoblastic tissue after delivery or termination of pregnancy. It is a common and treatable complication. The incidence is forty percent, seventeen percent, and two point seven percent in each trimester. Now, what are the risk factors? Who all are susceptible? Although it can occur in any pregnancy, the pregnancies predisposed are the second trimester abortions (MTP), that is medical termination of pregnancy, and morbidly adherent placenta. These three are the risk factors wherein the persistent trophoblastic tissue is seen. The body is not able to expel. whole of the placenta in these three conditions hence these are the risk factors now coming to the clinical presentation so patients will come with vaginal bleeding irregular vaginal bleeding to be more precise along with pelvic pain now what is the next step in this clinical scenario so you will order an ultrasound lower abdomen as the investigation it is first line imaging modality for the diagnosis of suspected rpoc now what are the findings on ultrasound the b mode or the gray scale ultrasound shows one of these two findings first one is thickened endometrial eco complex and the thickness should be more than 10 mm at least and the second is endometrial mass you will see a mixed echogenic or a hetero echoic mass in the endometrium with varying depth of myometrial invasion it can be totally within the endometrium or it can invade in the myometrium but less than to the 1/3 of the extent now look at these images the first one shows thickened endometrial eco complex measuring 12 mm which is obviously more than 10 mm so in correct clinical scenario it will be favoring rpocs and the second feature is this endometrial mass you can see a heteroechoic or mixed echogenicity mass within the endometrium this finding also favors the presence of rpoc and to confirm these gray scale findings just put a color doppler and see the vascularity the presence of color within this thickened endometrial eco complex or endometrial mass favors rpoc it has a very high specificity so the color doppler is a must it also helps in grading the rpocs which i will tell you further so the crux of the ultrasound is if you see thickened endometrial eco complex either a thickened endometrial eco complex or endometrial mass with internal vascularity it is very very highly specific of rpoc in correct clinical scenario and what is the correct clinical scenario the patient has had an history of abortion mtp or recent delivery along with irregular vaginal bleeding so rpoc is equal to two findings thickened eec or endometrial mass 
plus vascularity is equal to RPOC. So here in this image you can see there is an endometrial mass with increased internal vascularity. So it is equivalent to RPOC. You can confidently make a diagnosis of RPOC based on these findings. Now I will tell you about gradings of RPOC. So RPOC has been graded based on the internal vascularity in four grades. Grade 0, 1, 2 and 3. So coming to the grade 0 RPOC. Grade 0 RPOC will show zero vascularity that is no detectable vascularity in thickened EEC or endometrial mass. So differential at this point will include blood clot and a vascular RPOC. You do not need to delineate between these two entities because both of these will not hamper clinical management because both tend to pass spontaneously without intervention are unlikely to cause severe bleeding. So if you have a grade 0 RPOC, no worries. It is either a blood clot or an avascular RPOC, both of which are harmless and will pass spontaneously. So this is the grade 0 RPOC on ultrasound. You can see in the first image there is an endometrial mass within endometrial cavity and when we put color doppler in this mass there is zero vascularity within this mass making this an grade 0 RPOC. Now coming to grade 1 RPOC. It will show type 1 vascularity that is minimal vascularity. So whenever you see minimal vascularity in the thickened EEC or endometrial mass it is grade 1 RPOC. Now you must be wondering what is the objective criteria to call a vascularity as a minimal vascularity? So you have to compare the vascularity with adjacent myometrium in that section. If the myometrial vascularity in that section and that image is more than the vascularity in the RPOC, then it is grade 1 RPOC. So it is simple. Just compare the vascularity with myometrium. Vascularity in the mass or EEC less than myometrium is grade 1 RPOC. Now I will show you the example of grade 1 RPOC to be more clear. So this is grade 1 RPOC. Look here. In the first image you can see a mixed echogenic heteroechoic mass within the endometrium. And when we put color doppler in this mass, there is minimal vascularity. Look at the adjacent myometrium. You can see that the endometrial mass has a vascularity less than that of adjacent myometrium making it a grade 1 RPOC. Now coming to grade 2 RPOC. Grade 2 RPOC will show moderate vascularity in the thickened EECO mass that is the vascularity equal to myometrium. This is the objective criteria. Now coming to the example of grade 2 RPOC. In the first image you can see endometrial mass and when we put color doppler in this mass you see the vascularity within the mass is equal to that of adjacent myometrium. Hence you will label it as a grade 2 RPOC in your report. Coming to grade 3 RPOC, it will show marked vascularity in the thickened EEC or mass and marked vascularity means vascularity in the mass will be more than the myometrium. Now this scenario will hit you with the differential. The AVM will be a potential differential of this imaging picture. So, caution sh should be advised to the gynecologist during treatment because these cases will have high risk of bleeding. If a large vessel is inadvertently unroofed during dilatation and curettage, 
These hypervascular RPOC may cause massive bleeding leading to uterine AVMs and may require uterine artery embolizations prior to intervention. And this is the grade 3 RPOC on ultrasound. In the first image you can see thickened endometrium and when we put color Doppler in this then you can see that there is marked vascularity within the endometrium more than the adjacent myometrium making it a grade 3 RPOC. Now, how will you differentiate this grade 3 RPOC from its potential differential AVM? So, I will make it easy for you. Here's a table rpoc versus avm that is arteriovenous malformation so the most important feature is the location rpoc will have its epicenter in endometrium and avms will have its epicenter in myometrium second is angiography on angiography you can see a early draining vein in AVMs while it will be absent in RPOC. Now here's the list of differentials of RPOC. So first differential is a blood clot. It is the differential of grade 0 RPOC and you do not need genuinely to differentiate between blood clot and a grade 0 RPOC because practically it doesn't matter. Both are harmless and both will pass out spontaneously. Second differential is AVM which is the differential of grade 3 RPOC and I have already told you the difference. Look for the epicenter. AVMs will have their epicenter in myometrium while RPOCs will have their epicenter in endometrium. Third differential is gestational trophoblastic disease. It also looks as mixed heteroechoic mass in endometrial cavity and how will you now differentiate this from RPOC? So the most specific one is if you have to remember just one point remember to look for beta HCG and history. Beta HCG will be highly highly raised in GTDs. They will be in lakhs. While in RPOCs, there will be low levels of beta HCG or a decreasing trend of beta HCG and they will mostly be less than 10,000, not more than it. And the fourth differential now is endometritis. On USG, it will show thickened endometrium, heteroechoic endometrium with increased vascularity. Hence, it can mimic RPOC, but it will have a different clinical scenario. So, it will be easily ruled out. Now, coming to a tabular differentiation between RPOC and GTD. So, you can differentiate it clinically by the investigations and by the imaging. So, clinically... RPOC will have transvaginal expulsion of fetal remnants while GTD will have transvaginal expulsion of hydropic vesicles. Secondly, uterine size in RPOC will be equal to or less than the gestation age while in GTDs there will be excessive uterine size which will be minimal more than 4 weeks larger than the gestation age. Second point is hyperemesis gravidarum. RPOC will not have hyperemesis gravidarum while GTDs will have high cases of hyperemesis gravidarum. Next is the investigation which is beta HCG and it is the most important one. In RPOCs there will be low levels or so decreasing trend of beta HCG that is less than 10,000 while in GTDs rising or persistently elevated beta HCG levels will be seen and usually they will be more than 1 lakh. Now coming to the imaging differential. So on imaging you will see 
bilateral ovarian cysts and ascites in gtd while these will be absent in apoc ovarian cysts are obviously the theca lutein cysts which are classically associated with gtds and second is a favorite color doppler in rpoc color doppler will show low peak systolic velocity and low resistive index while in gtds there will be high psv and high ri so these are the differential points between rpoc and gtd now coming to ct and mri usually the diagnosis of rpoc is easily made based on ultrasound along with the clinical scenario but sometimes in long standing chronic rpoc ct and mri are observed so we must know the picture in the ct and mri so on ct you will see enhancing mass in the uterine cavity and ct angiography may be done alongside to define the vascular anatomy and on mri endometrial mass will be seen with heterogeneous signal intensity on both t1 and t2 weighted images the signal intensity is heterogeneous because there is chronic bleed within so bleed obviously have multiple stages like hemosiderin methemoglobin etc so the signals will be heterogeneous both on t1 and t2 and on post gadolinium images you will see variable enhancement so these were the ct and mri pictures now coming to the treatment of rpoc treatment depends on degree of vaginal bleeding size of rpoc and the vascularity within the rpoc that is the grading of rpoc so there are three forms of treatment first is expectant management which means monitoring the condition to see if the body expels the tissue normally and naturally which happens in cases of grade 0 rpoc medical management is the next line wherein there are some medications which help the uterus to contract and expel the retained tissue and the last resort is surgical management wherein dilatation and curettage is done to remove the retained placenta so this was all about rpoc i hope you found this video about rpoc useful understanding rpoc is vital for maintaining women's health if you suspect a rpoc or are experiencing any related symptoms you now know what is the management and what is the diagnosis thank you for watching please like share and subscribe for more educational videos